Commissioner Barry. Here. Commissioner Richardson. Present. Commissioner Paris. Present. Commissioner Lawrence. Here. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Gribble. Commissioner Setzer. Here. All present and accounted for. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, it's not exactly spring, but it's a whole lot better than it's been. <laughs> um, everybody, if you haven't already had a chance to look at the art on the walls that uh, Melissa got hung <clears throat> last week, uh, Tony Kirk is the art artist. She has a very interesting explanation of how she came to do this work. There's also a way to order by the work. Um, and uh, it will be up for the next two months, is that correct? So we can enjoy it during that period of time. It's quite wonderful. Um, we have no public comments, and we have no presentations. So we will go right to the committee updates, and thanks to all the committee members for good hard work this last month in spite of the terrible weather. So um, shall we start with you, Bob, with public art? Sure, we met last Thursday and we started off with uh, Mike reporting an uptick in applications f to hang uh, artwork at here at the, uh, the council chambers, as well as the next person who's going to be here after, is it Tony Kirk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that will be Kathleen Myers. She'll be showing her work here uh, beginning in May. Let's see, we also discussed uh, briefly a way to promote maybe some school district art events, but after a lot of back and forth, we thought we'd table the subject because there might be, we might be encroaching in certain areas or could possibly step into some security issues. Uh, so we thought maybe we'll just put that down for a while and rethink it. <clears throat> we had a special sneak preview of the uh, arts survey that you have in front of you today. Mike's got it for everybody. And um, some interesting, uh, interesting notes in there. Uh, Mike also reported that the annual city survey is being mailed to select, is it select residents? How many people do they pick, Mike? How does it work? So in total, I believe they select about 3,000 residents at random. Okay. Yep. Now, and did we have any, we had one or zero last time questions about the arts? So in the last survey two years ago, we had a couple of questions that had been folded into sections about communications and sections about parks and recreation. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first year that we'll have a dedicated arts commission section for questions, um, yeah. or five questions, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later when okay. we talk about the survey. Okay. Also, Mike approached the uh, Nelson in regards to any outreach programs that they have. And I think we're uh, stuck by the county line a little bit. We're just south of uh, where their outreach ends. So now we're looking at uh, other ways to perhaps maybe go visit them in their county and some of the arts here in the Kansas City metro area. And uh, lastly, we got a sneak preview of the uh, color sketch by the muralist JT Daniels. And that's my report. And uh, Mike, will we see that the uh, JT Daniels thing this evening? Are you going to put that up on the screen later? Not this evening. Not yet? Okay. So, a sneak preview. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay, Laura, about uh, Performance Art Committee. All righty. Uh, myself and two of the four Golden Girls got together uh, at our last meeting, uh, and our conversation really was centered around uh, the results of the survey we had had to that date. Uh, you know, so we kind of combed through the survey, kind of talked through some questions and uh, really begin to kind of open up conversation about, okay, well, let, let's start providing ideas based off of our observations and things that were in the survey. Uh, so, you know, we talked about our family art days, which, you know, I think we've already planned the entire year uh, already. So it's just really a matter of 
putting the different events in the different months. Uh, so we've got that completely booked out uh, for the rest of this year. We talked about the amphitheater. Uh, I know Melissa uh, talked about kind of summer scenes kind of being the kickoff for that possibly. Uh, so we kind of talked about, you know, musical selections and kind of what we think we'd want to uh, do once we get to that point. Uh, and then uh, I know we talked about a film festival uh, and reaching out to the Nelson uh, to try to see how we could uh, coordinate all of that and kind of bring that here in the fall. Uh, we discussed the entire summer concert series uh, and kind of, you know, what genres of music and maybe some potential bands that uh, we could suggest uh, as far as uh, preparing for that. Uh, and then we talked about a uh, fall, a possible fall performance at the amphitheater that uh, included the high school. Uh, so possibly a play or something like that that uh, we could get with the high school and see if we could put that on kind of as a fall introduction to the amphitheater, uh, a follow up from summer scene. So uh, a lot of conversation really built around the results of the survey and kind of how we drive the next steps. So that is it. Um, any questions from the commissioners? And I, oh, Sharon, yes. Yes, um, I just wondered, have we actually come up with dates for the summer uh, concerts, like on the lawn? We haven't really figured, and we, we plan on like maybe two, two or three concerts. Okay, but we haven't figured out a date at this point. I think during that, we kind of assumed one in June and one in July, because August would be summer scene, and that would count as Okay. One. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Sharon, you want to talk about your full year of scheduling? <laughs> well, um, I think we, we, uh, we've kind of reviewed it before, but just to confirm, uh, March 30th, um, I'll be working with the kiddos to make kites, or actually, it's a kite making kit that we've uh, received. Is that correct, Melissa? Yes. Good. And they'll, they're plastic, so the children will be able to design on the kites with um, permanent markers, and then the, the instructions will be simple. I'm hoping, and I'm gonna make one, that the parents can help them actually make the kite and then go fly the kite, hopefully. Um, and then on April 13th, Laura's gonna re, um, um, facilitate the kindness rock painting. So uh, I would normally be here, but I've got a DAR function that day. So um, Laura, I'm sure, can handle it. As she said, she used to manage quite nicely in high school. <laughs> so, and then we've, uh, June, we're gonna do a paint and plant, uh, which is flower pots, painted flower pots, and then plant little plants in them like we did last year. July, we're going to, um, do some nature type craft, not sure what it's gonna be, but that's, um, and then of course August is summer scene. We'll probably have some activity at that point. I haven't quite figured that out. And then again, the fall we'll do what we did last year, um, Dia de los Muertos and pumpkins. And then maybe in November we'll do some kind of holiday related craft. And so again, if you have any ideas, for summer scene as an activity, let me know. And I think, uh, well, we're, we're scheduled for the paint and sip party April 25th. And that's all I have. Who's the paint and sip artist leader this time? It's God Art Gallery. Okay. Um, and I'm just waiting for them to set up the online registration and that should be done any day now. So as soon as that's ready, then we'll start promoting it. Got, got art. Got, <laughs> got it, got art, yeah. Any other questions, suggestions, Bob? I just missed it. Was there a May event or not? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we did not schedule May because um, we can't use Centerview during the month of May. So, and we were talking about perhaps doing something with the um, Ray Peck Foundation, some kind of activity in concert with their activity. So we're still, I haven't had a form, we are not having a formal family art day in May, but something that we can do maybe at that, at their, what is it, the fun run or no, 
A bike a thon. I think it's a 5K. Oh, is it it's a 5K? Okay, that's out at the school. Okay, yes, 5K. Thank you. Uh, so uh, what's the April paint and sip day again, 20, 25th? Okay, great. And Melissa's sure we're going to fill it up as soon as we open it, so great. Great work, everybody, everybody. Um, okay, staff reports and our favorite part, the budget. Well, since we have the budget listed later in the evening, I wanted to share, and I'm going to be broadcasting my screen here for just a second, um, because I wanted to present the survey results, um, or at least kind of go through a quick comparison. Um, the 2019 survey that we released at the beginning of January and closed at the end of February, we had three questions that were identical to the survey that we did in 2016. Um, and so wanted to show you a little bit of the comparisons, um, some definitely some good news, um, some very interesting news, um, but then also the I think the biggest takeaway, if you've had a chance to look through the data and, and all, all of the questions and, and answer packets are, are at, your, at the dais tonight, but um, I think far and away we have folks that are interested and want to see some sort of live music in the community. Um, that is probably the biggest runaway item that I saw in the data as we were looking at it. Um, in all, um, between January and February, we had 131 people take the survey, um, which was a little over twice as many that took it the first time around. So I thought we had a really good turnout for the survey itself. Um, also, if you get a chance to dig in and start looking at some of the open-ended questions, a lot of great suggestions. Um, you know, definitely, I don't think we'll be bringing Beyonce to the amphitheater anytime soon, but there are certainly some great ideas for future classes and future ideas that this commission could take on. Um, the biggest I item that really we're comparing 2016 to 2018, or that's important um, for the whole commission as well to share with members of the city council is when we asked to what degree do you or your family members feel it's important for the city of Raymore to incorporate more arts into the community. And this one had a great swing between 2016 and 2019. In all, 97% of the people who responded to the survey said that it was extremely important or important. Only 3% of the respondents said not very important or not important. That's a 13% increase compared to 2016. Um, I think we're heading in the right direction and that shows that as we continue to build on our success and we continue to build on the success of more arts in the community, people will begin to recognize its importance, not just from a cultural standpoint or from a gathering standpoint where people can come together, they can enjoy it, but also from an economic development standpoint where we now uh, have a recognizable piece of artwork at the entrance to our community and the entrance to a commercial area. Um, there are definite ties and there's other research out there that shows that arts and cultural events have an economic impact and so I think people are beginning to see that again arts are extremely important for us as a whole. Another question that we had in 2016 as well as 2019 are what are the areas of the arts most interesting to you and your family members? Um, this wasn't terribly surprising. Music again by far and away 87 percent of people who responded to it said that music was a, a top priority. Um, we allowed them to select multiples I think believe up to three in the survey. Um, and so of the respondents, 87% said music. Um, that was up from 80% in 2016. 68% said fine art, so things like paintings and drawing, murals, um, up from 55%. And then theater. Um, this one was kind of a uh, uh, one that surprised me a little bit, but 64% of those that responded said that this was a top priority, um, up from 55%. And so the way that this was calculated is those that put the folks that put this as their number one priority among several other priorities and so this kind of gives you an idea of where people are really focused um, among that whole long list of about uh, nine or ten different items um, that we included. Um, we also asked and while this question was not in the 2016 survey it was important have you participated in the Arts Commission events in the past year this is a great baseline to figure out do folks know about the Arts Commission and the events that are out there um, summer scene just under 70% of the folks that took the survey had either attended and enjoyed summer scene. Um, we see jazz on the lawn as well as the pop-up art project were really kind of number two and three. Um, and then as also as folks begin to realize that the City Hall and Centerview Art Gallery that they had at some point seen it. 
Um, so I felt like this was a really nice to see. Um, I don't want folks to kind of come away with the impression that, you know, the paint and sip party or the pop art your pet, just because they have, you know, the right around the 10% doesn't mean that they aren't well loved. It's just those are much more uh, the smaller classes. So it's kind of a smaller group, whereas with summer scene, you, know, you take over a whole park for a day and it, it kind of draws a, a different crowd. And then finally, the last question, um, this was another one that we did have compared to 26 or one from 2016 as well as here in 2019. What should be the top arts priorities for the city of Raymore? So this isn't just um, what is a priority for you as an individual, but what should we as the city be prioritizing? And this one's a little more difficult to read um, only because I tried to show directly the numbers from 2016, which is what's gonna be in the middle, and then the ones from 2019. Kind of interesting to see how some have fallen off a little bit as an arts priority and others have picked up considerably. Um, art in public places, for example, has gone from 64% of folks saying it's a priority to 47%. But then on the um, kind of the converse side of that, or the other side of the you know, ethnic festivals or folk festivals went from 16% to 29%. Um, same thing with live theater and performing arts going from 51 to 60, uh, 61 percent just about. Um, and then live music going from, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, live music going from 22 to 35 percent. Um, there are a lot of conclusions you can kind of draw from some of this data, and so feel free to ask any questions about it or some of the kind of some of the impressions that I've taken away or, or what I want to share here tonight. But ultimately, I think this gives us a really nice roadmap for what we can be doing in the short term. Um, if you notice some of the questions in there really talk about or really answer how much are folks willing to pay for an event, um, which, was, which was interesting where we see some folks saying that they'd be willing to pay up to $50 for an arts or cultural or event. Uh, the majority of the folks are saying that they'd pay somewhere between you know, you know, 20 and $30 was the majority, um, but that folks are interested and willing um, that they would be willing to pay for some sort of an arts or cultural event, I think shows to us that there's a way that we could further support from what the commission is already putting, and you know, when it puts its dollars and, and uses its money to support these events, that there may be the ability to charge for some of these events, um, even though we wanna keep them revenue neutral. Um, at the same time, the second question we asked directly after that is how much are you willing to pay for something like parking? And that was very clear. People do not want to pay for parking. Um, and so, you know, ticket ticket sales or revenue for some of these events through tickets is, is where we're going to want to look rather than asking people to pay for parking, which could deter folks from coming to an event. Um, also helps us answer a logistical question of when is the best time for folks um, to attend cultural events um, such as the ones we sponsor and overwhelmingly the weekends. Um, and so I think as we start to plan more events, we really, really should be working toward looking at the weekends and making sure that we have the facilities that are available then as well as staffing available. And so that'll be a logistical um, hurdle that we'll want to kind of meet head on. Um, any questions about the survey as, like I said, we kind of flew through some of the data. Those were some of my just initial takeaways, but there's a lot more in there. Um, certainly take some time to read through those open-ended questions. Um, as I said at the beginning, a lot of great information, a lot of great ideas and, and things that we can, we can use very quickly. Dad, a question. Do you think that the art in public places dropped because we now have some? That, that very well could be, um, especially with art that is as visible um, as the seed um, folks who attend Center View and know of the tree, um, as well as we have the mural in Memorial Park that folks know about. What I would like to do, and, and this kind of the, the dovetails into to my next part, is the five questions that we have in the survey really get at um, what do you, you know, are you satisfied with the quality of public art as, as sp a city sponsored public art? Um, and we always include a, you know, a, a, you know one through five, you know, five being the most satisfied, one being the least satisfied, and then there's a column for don't know. Um, what I'm really interested in when our community survey comes back is how high is that don't know going to be versus the actual satisfaction rating? Because what we may want to tackle in 2020 as a commission is, are there better ways we could be identifying those pieces of public art as sponsored by the Arts Commission or sponsored by the city in the way of, you know, some sort of a plaque, some sort of a, an online map that we promote to folks. Um, while that, that priority list has dropped by simply having public art out there, 
um, I think it's going to be important that we make sure that we identify that that public art that's out there is in fact sponsored by the Arts Commission and, and something that was undertaken by this group. I think um, at least those of us who were in the two committee meetings have had a chance to see this. Um, any uh, other sort of reactions that now that you had time to think about it a little bit um, that you've got to make, anybody who's had a chance? And if you haven't, um, do you have any qu other further questions to clarify it so that it'll make it easier for you to, I, I do appreciate the comparison, Mike. I think it's, it's very instructive. Um, and performing arts has got its work cut out for it, no, no doubt about it. Um, okay. Well, thanks, Mike. That was that was a, a great. I love the comparison part particularly. Um, okay, next on your. Well, we kind of talked about upcoming events, but do we want to talk about them again? Uh, the two upcoming events are March 30th is a family art day for the kite making event, and then <coughs> April 13th, the family art day kindness rock painting. Um, also, although not listed on here, the. Uh, Paint and Sip Party um, also coming along and we'll have more information out promoting that and um, reaching out to folks who maybe have signed up in the past, maybe got on a wait list to let them know about this event coming up. Um, the other item though, it's not an upcoming event. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the community survey, we do have um, several questions that are listed for specifically for the Arts Commission. Um, and I believe everyone should have a copy of what those four questions are at the very top. To give you an idea of kind of what you're looking at, this is the last page of um, kind of an eight page booklet that got mailed to, to a random residence. Um, and so while it's not, uh, not as, um, I think as, as large as our own community or uh, arts survey that we did with as many questions, I think these are four questions that really get at the heart of the level of satisfaction of residents um, and some of the programs that, that are kind of at the core of what the Arts Commission is doing. We should have results for this back in April and we'll be presenting it to the City Council, um, the full results, and I'll make sure that the Arts Commission is notified as well as the other boards and commissions um, when that goes before the City Council. Um, so these are currently in the mail mm -hmm. at people's homes or? Correct. Okay, and they have until when to answer? Um, I believe they have a four weeks to respond with the, the paper. Okay, okay. So toward the end of April, we'll know. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, other questions? Bob? That was my question. Oh, um, Sharon. Same. That, oh, like mine, <laughs> yes. Anybody? Other questions? No, okay. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, so we come to the part of our agenda, the consent agenda. Uh, everybody should have had a chance to look at the minutes. Um, are there any corrections or additions to the minutes by anyone present? Then I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Unanimous, thank you. Uh, we don't have anything under unfinished business unless someone has something to bring up. We do have a small piece of new business, uh, which has to do with the budget. Um, and after looking at the uh, agenda and the presentations for the uh, Mid-America Council of Arts Agencies offering for this year, nobody was really that interested in doing it. Those of us who had been before felt it was sort of repetitive. It also seems more geared to uh, agency staff people than it does to commissioners and neither Mike nor Melissa was interested in going again this year. So um, I looked at the uh, budget and there we had $650 for, um, what's the issue? Professional Not continuing it. Professional development, thank you. Um, uh, which it seemed a shame to have that remain there when we've all been given a mandate that we do more performing arts. So we talked about the possibility of moving a portion of that into the performing arts budget. Um, 
leaving a little bit because there may be other opportunities for professional development. As a matter of fact, there's one coming up, Missouri Arts Council, a $15 one day um, uh, a conference in Columbia, um, which we could easily pay for with the remaining funds. So um, I guess, do you want to do you want to present the rest of the budget before we do the um, have a vote? The only, or do you want to re-express what I've badly expressed here? <laughs> um, the only thing I wanted to point out is this does uh, th this budget amendment um, would essentially leave $150 in professional development, moving that $500 to the summer concert series, giving the summer concert series a total of $1,250 to use throughout the rest of the fiscal year. Um, that really is the end of any staff report. Oh, really? Okay. I'm sorry, I went ahead of you. That's all right. I got ahead of you. Um, Sharon, yes. Just a qu uh, quick question. Is the um, performance art, the summer concert series, supplemented by the city? I can't recall. Does your department have any input into that as far as funding, or is it all anything that we have to pay for comes out of our budget alone this this the summer concert series at this point will be funded by through fully through the arts commission okay yeah. thank you have we done this before the summer concert series we held um we had one event last year the jazz in uh, jazz on the lawn event um and okay. then also i used summer scene as kind of a two bookend events one earlier and one later in the summer um, we had a third one that we had planned, but the performers had ultimately backed out, and it was just kind of infeasible to get them to 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 attend. And so, we we had two last year just to see how well something like Centerview would serve as a venue for a smaller performance. Um, thought it was fairly successful, um, and we're looking to do something similar this year. Well, and I think the the survey shows that showed that people liked the the jazz on the lawn kind of so it got some good attention um so i guess the chair will entertain a motion to amend the budget um taking five hundred dollars out of what is now uh professional development and putting it into the performance art category um do i hear such a motion so moved. and a second yes. All right, now any discussion on the motion? Bob, you look like you'd like to talk. Oh, no? You didn't push the button, did you? Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right, then all in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. And we are unanimous again. Thank you, Mike. Um, so now we come to commissioner comments. Um, we'll start over on this side with Bob, if you have one or two. No comment. Okay. Laura? It's totally, oh yes, if you have a question, you can do that too. That's a comment. All right, so the summer has uh, a professional day in Columbia. Can we know what that is so I can, what date that is? That, I emailed you about that. It's the, the arts and seniors Okay, I'll look again. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll get it. I believe that's April fourth. Yes, April fourth. It's uh, just a day in Columbia. And I thought I got, got an answer from you, but try again. I actually I have the brochure with me. Yeah. I thought that was for that conference. Oh, no. This is a. It's a one. It's a one-day thing, and I, Mike and I at this point are planning to go. There may be somebody from Foxwood Springs. I'm not sure, but you know we could make a car. Take us all. And it is fifteen dollars with a box lunch. Such a deal. <laughs> Any other comment, Laura? No. Okay. Sharon, how about you? Yes, um, I first of all would just like to thank Melissa for doing a fabulous job on the Arts Commission Facebook page, making sure that we update with um, events. And I love the fact that you put in articles or links to things. I've shared that with 
family members the and the Tri-County Art League, anything that you post that I think the Art League would be, um, for instance, the posting of the, the um, artwork, I share it with the Art League so that they can benefit. And Tony talked to me this tonight, or actually like this afternoon, she was thrilled to even know that it was on. She didn't realize it was gonna be on Facebook. So she was quite happy about that and she was very grateful to the city for allowing her to you know, display her work. So again, thanks to you, Melissa, primarily Mike too, but um, it's just great to keep, keep that going, so thanks. Lauren, any comments? No comments. No comments. Jim? Uh, no comment. Well, I'll just say uh, thank you as always to the staff and outside of this, I think we're really lucky to live in Raymore where we have a really good public works department who have kept up with this awful, awful winter and filled all our potholes as quickly as they have and kept us safe. Um, it's maybe a little outside our purview, but, but we are residents too. Um, and thank you again all for being here tonight and for all the good work that you're doing and all the good things that we've got ahead of us. And unless there's any other business, this meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.